Comedic, hop on. I thought I heard, could have swore I had you in earlier, but Comedic, hop in. Hop in, Comedic. Yeah, I'm gonna, I like to say I agree with those last guys. They they made a point when they said they wanted to abolish oh, race. Race has I, been I, nothing but... Not um, you. This is what I'm talking Okay, I forgot. He's, okay. I need to block him. This is that funky Puerto Rican dude who tries to cosplay as the foundation of black American. So, yeah, you see he agrees with that. That's why I'm questioning them dudes who go around here saying we're going to try to abolish race altogether. I don't know how that going to work. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's real suspicious. Yeah, this clown, this Puerto Rican who tries to pretend to be FBA. I like that. Yeah, I bet you do. Yeah, watch these folks. All right. Watch these people. All right, let's get Top Stepper in here. Top Stepper. Hop in, Top Stepper. Top Stepper, hop on, sir. Yo. What's up, brother? What's going on, Tariq? Yeah, so um, first things first, I'll just say that the the second nigga, I think his name was like Trey or some shit. Yeah. That nigga was cooking his shit. Shout out to, to that nigga. But uh, let me say this. Um, if if blacks have been fighting for reparations and haven't gotten it, how is that a better fight than trying to abolish race theory? Well, the thing is, we're getting things done, like fasting political. And we're doing that based on our ethnicity, getting on code based on based on our ethnicity. See how that works? Yeah, but you haven't gotten your goal is to get reparations and you haven't gotten that. Like you've you haven't you've talked about all the things that they that you guys are trying to accomplish and you haven't gotten. You guys are owed. So why why wouldn't you uh like how is that I don't understand how that's a better fight? How's that a better fight than something that has had zero energy put towards it? Like you claim, you claim you guys are, are are the warrior class, and you put zero energy towards it. But reparations is a better fight than trying to uh, abolish race theory. Uh, can you make that make sense? Please? Yeah. Well, reparations. That's one of the goals. That's just one. That's not the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is just complete empowerment for foundational Black Americans, which is what we're doing. We're empowering ourselves. Right, you're empowering yeah. yourselves, but there's, we're, you've empowered yourself. How much? Like, how far? We like, group. You, we as a collective group, we're empowering our group based on lineage. Okay, so let's say you let's say the goal is to get a hundred percent empowerment. How? What percentage would you say, uh, the FBA group is at right now? Well, we can't quantify that based on percentage wise, but just more than your ethnic group, more than your failed group. No, no, no! Don't try to compare it to me. I'm just, no, bro. I, see, oh, see, I, bro. See, see. I know what you're trying to do, bro. Don't try to do that, bro. We don't have to have that troll conversation. Sir, We're two grown no, men, bro. You came in trolling. You think I didn't catch that? Oh yeah, he cooked you. You think I didn't catch that? I caught that. I caught it. You think I didn't catch you coming? Bro, bro. We're two grown men. You yeah. Thought I didn't cooked. catch you trolling? You thought I didn't catch it, huh? Bro, it's not trolling. Bro, we can have a we're conversation, bro. We can have we're, the conversation, bro. Don't get to... You came in trying to throw a little troll diss in there. Don't, yeah, this this plebiscite babbling tether, whoever he was, but he cooked. Yeah, yeah, I saw you. So, yeah, you came in on some um, hater tether vibe. So I got your number, sir. Big stepper, top stepper, I see. Your tether, your stepper. Bro, why are you why are you muting I'm me, talking bro? To you. I'm I'm giving you a lesson. I, bro, you trying to run away from the conversation, bro. Okay, you're to... talking. You're not going to talk. We, we're talking. We're going to have a conversation. Now you ask. Let's get to it. Now you ask. How do we measure the empowerment? We measure it based on your failure. Long as we ain't failing like you, right? 
long as we're not failing and fleeing like you. That's how I know we're doing good. Okay. You feel me? Since you since you want to have that conversation, okay, let's, let's uh, go. Okay. So you're saying you're saying my people are, are uh, yep, fleeing? Yep, you're fleeing failed tether. Didn't your people flee? None of my people fled, sir. You didn't have thousands of people fleeing to Mexico and Canada? That's not facts. Um, the people who went up to Canada, many of them came back, and the people who went to Mexico... No, no, no I don't care if they uh, came back. No, they... no, 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 sir, no, no. The people who went to Mexico, the Muscogos, they made a deal to protect the border. So it was a reciprocal relationship. Okay? You, are, it's not reciprocal. You ain't helping us worth a damn. You just over here eating, being a big musty tether, sir. Nah. Bro, you sound like a clown, bro. You could, bro, you you a complete clown, bro. You're, bro, you a, you're a complete fraud, bro. You're, you're a projecting. fraud, bro. You you're talking about, bro. You're you projecting. Talk because you come from a failed fraud culture of scamming and lying and fleeing. No, no, no. Bro, you talk about men acting out of emotion and being made, but you attacked the man that was making, that was trying to have a no, simple wasn't. conversation no, no, about he, elevating. He was like you. He was a passive aggressive hater. He kept being very accusatory. And I don't want no nigga sitting up here talking to me like, if you got a problem, say that. Don't just come up here with little goofy, trollish ass conversations and you really got a personal issue be a man and say that like you you came in trying to troll passive aggressively i caught you and i saw you for the fleeing tether you were so let's just get to the nitty-gritty let's not don't ask me about well what percentage is empowerment for fba no 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 just say you're a, a lying funky fleeing jealous tether just say that and let's stop the semantics. Let's get to the nitty gritty. I knew you were tethered just by the goofy, trollish questions you're asking. Well, you, if you want reparations, you haven't gotten it. What percentage? If is it a hundred percent? Is it ninety percent empowerment? That's some. You're a fraud, bro. You're a fraud, bro. You knew I was gonna cook this, bro. You're projecting because you're a failure. You don't want to have any real conversations, bro. You don't want to have any real conversations. You want to have these troll, these house slave nigga troll debates, bro. You're a bad you're, nigga, you're, bro. You're not standing on no business, you're bro. You're emotional. You're not tough, sir. You're not tough sounding at all. You're trying to sound like a foundational black American G, and it ain't in you. The words ain't even coming out right. Your accent is flipping up your words. It's not sounding hard, sir. Your Caribbean accent is messing up your gangster. You don't even know how to cosplay as us correctly. Go make you some Aki and Saltfish, dude. You ain't us. Stop trying to cosplay as us. Stop trying to cosplay as my lineage. All right, he got his ass up out of here. Yeah, I caught you. He came in trying to sound slick and trying to make little slick comments because your fellow Tether called in. The dude, yeah, these dudes, man, I'm thinking these dudes are like undercover Tethers talking this nonsense, talking about abolishing race. And that sounds like Tether talk. That sounds like Tether babble. All right, let me get some more people in here. Aubrey, what's happening? Let's get Aubrey. Hello. What's up, Aubrey? What's up, Aubrey? What's up, Tariq? What's on your mind, Aubrey? Um, I just have a question. What do you think about? I just saw a video of some girl who was stealing from Walmart, and she got caught. She had like a cart full of stuff. Apparently, she stole something that was over a hundred dollars fine, which obviously says he should not be doing. But what do you think about that? How they're cracking down? That's random as hell. I don't think about it at all. Crime happens. What does that have to be or anybody else? Well, I just think that a lot of people steal from the self-checkout. So I was just curious to know like, what your thoughts on are about that because a lot of people do it. I ain't got no thoughts on it. People steal. It happens. People steal. There's no thoughts on it. I don't understand why you're asking me that. What does that have to do with anything? 
That has nothing to do with FBA. I'm just curious. You know, I'm a fan. I understand. I'm a tether. That that has. I mean, every second somebody somewhere stealing something. I'm. What's that question for? What I don't I don't get it. What's the purpose of that question? Well, it was just I was just curious because I see obviously you're you have great opinions. I think, and I was just curious to what you think to your audience about like you know how people often steal from self checkout and now people are getting caught up very heavily. I, I just had that question. That's all. I'm sorry. I, I'm not offended. I'm just confused because people steal all. So what's unique about her stealing? Well, I don't know. I, I just saw it and it just went viral. So I'm just curious to be like, is it done? Are we no longer, are we no longer, you know, stealing a pack of muffins for self-checkout or not? Okay. So it went viral. So if it went viral, it must have been a black woman. Was it a black woman? It wasn't actually. It was a white woman. A white woman? She was freaking out. She was freaking out. <laughs> okay. Well, people steal. She thought she had that million dollars worth of white privilege and right. it did not work out for her. I, I haven't seen it. But yeah, people steal. People steal. They, you know, I don't... Hell, I don't know what you want me to tell you. People steal. That happens. Thievery happens. All right, that's not really anything to even comment about. All right. All right. Let me see who else we got in here. All right. Asia, you want to hop in here, Asia? Didn't I? Asia Shabazz. What's up, Asia Shabazz? Hop in, Asia. This Asia Shabazz. You want to unmute your microphone, Asia? Oh, Asia didn't want to say nothing. All right, let's get Emmanuel. Let's get Emmanuel in the building. Emmanuel, what's happening? Emmanuel, what's going on? All right. Y'all, come on now. Okay, let's try it this way, because I hate letting people up and they're not ready. There's some people who are just, they're in the request queue and they probably walked away from the phone. He might be on the toilet. You raise your hand if you're ready to get on. Let's try it that way. If you're ready to get on, just raise your hand. Let's just make it real simple. Um, let's get Optimistic Queen building. Optimistic Queen. And automatic. All right, optimistic queen and automatic. Hop on. Either or. Hey, I'm here. I'm here to read. Hey, do me a favor. Can we block the teller tethers from our spaces? I'm so getting tired of their nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. They can we can you just block I them? I wouldn't mind being a moderator and block them for right. You. I'm so tired of them. Right. You know what? And uh, that that one Puerto Rican tether, he keeps coming up with different screen names. So, you know, it, you know, if you block them, they'll just get on another screen name oftentimes. But automatic, hop on. And many of them, I'm, I'm open to all, talking to everybody. But when they get to trolling, it's like whatever. But automatic, what's up, man? Yo, yo, I just wanted to say to, to the dude that called up earlier with the I'm gonna pull up to the hidden, hidden, the hidden history museum. Like that ain't even that serious. Like it's just a little bit of Twitter. You know what I'm saying? It's just a difference in opinion. We ain't even gotta take it to that level. Don't do nothing goofy. And if you're gonna do something goofy, like at least let it be on the on the even playing field. You got like a cartoon as your profile picture. Like this man is putting his neck out there for the community and all that. So don't go, don't jump out the window, do nothing crazy on some just stupid. And you don't really get no points for that. And there's no disrespect to the brother, but you know, just just chill the f out. Like it ain't that deep. Yeah, you go. My Thank right. you so much. But yeah, dude, yeah, like I said, dude can come holler at me or let me know where he is. I ain't got no problem with that. I ain't got no problem with it. I have zero problem with that. Gotcha. You can come holler at me anytime. I'm very available. Yeah, I don't take kindly to anybody trying to puff their chests up or whatever, you know, I take the high road or whatever, but nigga, I'm with the sh If it's going to be that, it's going to be that. You come holler at me. Let me know where you at. He hopped off and I asked him where he was. He hopped off. 
Yeah, I don't really play games like that with cats. But yeah, whatever. You know, again, a lot of these cats are ops, dude. Let's be real. A lot of these, there's ops in these spaces. When people start talking a lot of this nonsensical stuff, man, the Cointel Pro movement is very real. Yeah. And a lot of people in these spaces, they've been doing a little oppy shit for, a, for a few years. There's some people in these spaces, man. You look at some of their, their actions. And some of y'all, I see you. I see who y'all clicked in with. I see some of y'all. I don't say nothing, but I see some of you. I see some of the little patterns that you have, you know. I got my eye on a few folks. I see what you're doing. I see who you're rolling with. I see who's giving you little information and all that old sucker shit. I see some. I see it. I see it. Yeah. Yeah, because I see some of these folks you clicked in with. Because, again, we've had some of these folks around us personally. And we found out they were ops. And then when I see other people connected to them, you know, I got the magnifying glass on everybody they're connected to. Yeah. I'll leave that right there. Let's get one more. Let's get one more good call in here. Let's get one more good call in here, ladies and gentlemen, because we're still heavy. We're still heavy in here. And by the way, you can go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Make a contribution to Hidden History Museum. Make a contribution to the Hidden History Museum, ladies and gentlemen. That would be phenomenal. Make a contribution to that museum, hiddenhistorymuseum.com. All right. Yeah. Let's see who we got. Now, raise your hand. Let's get, um, uh, who's this? Black. Let me see. Let's get Trav. Let's get Trav. Let's get Mr. Trav in here. Trav. Hop in, Trav. Yo, yo, how you doing, brother? Hey, not too much, not too bad, not too bad. I'm over here at work and stuff. Hey, let go. me let me get over here. It's breezy over here. You at Amazon? Nah, nah, nah. I got an airplane detailing company. I'm over here detailing private jets and stuff. Oh, that's <laughs> on your mind. All right, so. Before I was trying to get in contact with you, um, some people were talking about Florida. And I live in Palm Beach, Florida, West Palm Beach, Florida. I don't know if you ever heard of the sticks. Yeah. yeah. Um, that would be something interesting to put on one of your DVDs because a lot of people aren't too familiar with it about how they took the people in Palm Beach. It was the foundational black Americans in Palm Beach and how... Uh, Flagler, Henry Flagler got everybody off the island and then burned all their houses down and then blew it up to be what it is now. How is this gigantic multi million dollar, a billion dollar like enclave now? But it originally belonged to us and they pushed us across the railroad tracks and got us living in hoods and and whatnot. Well, now that's heavy. Now I didn't know they was that deep. But yeah, they've, they've done that to black areas. Man, we got to understand when. It comes to black areas. That's why the, the people in Palm Springs had to get a, they just put a judgment to give them some compensation out here in California. They've done all types of devious stuff to black neighborhoods to run us out. And it, it's just heavy. Myrick. Myrick, what's up? Myrick or Myrick? All right. Myrick ain't saying nothing. Uh, let's get um Lord Sal Salisbury. Lord Salisbury. What's up, Lord Salisbury? Lord Salisbury. What's happening with it? Unmute your microphone, brother. All right. This brother ain't saying nothing. All right, let's see. Let's get M.M. Magus. M.M. Magus, hop on. M.M. Magus, hop on. 
Okay. Y'all better raise your hand if y'all ready. All right. Let's go to the 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 sea killer. The sea killer in the building. I right, sea killer. What's up, Tariq? What's up? Where's Tariq getting all that cash? This is killer, man. I came and kicked it with you at the museum a few times. My man, man. How you doing, brother? I'm all right, brother. I just wanted to let it be known if anybody with Tariq Nasheeda, think about it. You always got riders, man. Don't think you ain't got no riders. No That's all day out here in L.A., brother. My man, real talk, my man, all day. Thank you so much, brother. All right now. Man, I'm, hey, that's what I'm saying. People can pull up if they want, man. All right. I am not tripping. All right. I am not tripping. All right. Uh, let's get one. Uh, Let's get Stony B. Stony B Fox. That's a hell of a name. Stony B, hop on, brother. Stony B. Hey, Tariq, can you hear me? I can hear you. What's going on with you? How you doing, bro? Um, um, I am I just want to talk to you about um basically what I've been seeing as a a stud out here. Okay. Uh, as a as a black stud. Okay. I thought your voice do, but now you're a stud. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. No, my voice is just a little bit heavy right now. Okay. Kind of just woke up. So, anywho, um, I just want to tell you basically what I believe has been going on is, um, so we got the new the new gays and the old gays. Okay. Basically, what's the difference? The new gays is these new people that's coming over. Uh, saying things like, you know, like the trans movement, the the things with the children in the schools, stuff like that. Us old gays, we kind of don't, we don't really rock with that. Um, right. And basically, I, I believe like it's like piggyback. I, I feel like the new gay wave is piggybacking off the black oppression. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Um, and I feel as if... The, the correlation that I got is basically, you know how we have like the immigrants here and like the the black immigrants, they come because uh, basically like how. OK, so like with I'm sorry, I'm so scatterbrained, but like how with um, with slavery, like how they have all this input after they finally come into the country. Yeah. You know, how after they haven't done what after they haven't struggled, how we struggled you know, and going through what we've gone through. And so they have a, the immigrants. The immigrants have a lot to say about what we do as people, right? And I feel that way with the new gays as well. They're coming in and they didn't have to go through the struggles that the old gays had to go through. Meaning like, you know, we were the ones that got told that we're going to hell. Um, we, you know, you know we, we got chased by, by fathers, brothers, mothers, you know, grannies, all kind of silly um, and so the new gays are coming in and saying like they're trying to change up the whole little setup that what we already have. And I feel like as if like the immigrants as is doing that as well, they're all piggybacking off of our off of black people and and what we have um struggled through. Yeah. That's not if that makes sense. The older how old are you? I'm I'm thirty four. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I see and so I would I was one of those young gays in the South, so I really had to go through it. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not cool being gay, especially not being in the South and everything like that. But I'm out here in LA, and so I've been experiencing uh, the immigrants, and uh, man, it's it's just so crazy. And even to uh, yesterday, I was listening to you, and I work with this. Uh, I'm a I'm a security guard as well, and I work with this uh, African uh, guy. And he went into that long spiel, like how you was talking about yesterday. Like they just, they just long winded. They very yeah. long winded. They want to tell you all the stories. And can you just get to the point? Mm. They like um, immigrants also like to try to confuse you. They like to try to uh, like act dumb. They like to play real dumb and ignorant as if they don't know what's really going on. Have you ever been into like a car wreck or a little fender bender? And like, it's like a Spanish person or an immigrant. They'd be like, oh, I don't know. I don't, I can't speak. I can't do this. I can't do that. But they can. Right. They have. 
Um, they've been playing this whole, they've been playing us. They, they, I've had a, a whole really bunch is. of immigrants tell me that Americans are dumb Americans. And so they it's take advantage of us. It's really not their fault. They've been trying to learn. They've been trying to learn English traditionally. They've been trying to all sorts of ways. Now, hold on, babe. hold on, hold on, babe. We'll get you in a second. Let, let's let this all right. let's just slow down. All right. But go ahead, Sister Stoney. Go ahead, dear. Okay, so I just want to tell you that, and um, that's that's just kind of like the correlation that I've been putting together. Yes. Being from the South and being out here in L.A. has actually impacted me in a different way because at first I really thought it was just kind of like black and white, and I actually thought that Spanish people was cool. I thought Spanish people were all good, but they not. I, I got called in by a Spanish guy because he was trying to hurt my feelings, you know uh what I'm saying? And he he did that to try to hurt my feelings, but I let him know that I'm from the South, you know. So I said, if I'm a nigga, your mama love that nigga dick, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Stuff like that, you know. And when I did that to him, he didn't know how to take it. So he pulled the gun out on me out here in L.A. And when he pulled out the gun out on me, you know, I'm from the South. So I put my hands up. I said, if you got something for me, then come on. And he just drove off because he, he, he realized I wasn't that kind of black person. Yeah. You know, some of these black people aren't as hard and I don't know what has gone on, but they've been softened up to a degree. Yeah. Now, how long have you been in L.A.? I've been out here since COVID, so I've got to experience the whole thing. Yeah. No traffic and everything. And now it's back traffic. <laughs> now, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I see your picture. You're not a bad looking stud. Yeah. No, I ain't, I'm not. No, I'm not were at you, all. Were you a film at one point? No, I wasn't. No, I've been like this my whole life. Really? So I got, I've, I've really went through, you know, the non-accepting and all that and all this and all that. And I want to tell you that us gays, we just wanted to be accepted at a point. You know what I'm saying? We just wanted to be able to fit in a room, just be in a room without being ridiculed or criticized or looked down on. Uh, being on a, or it, it used to be like, if I looked at a person, they would turn gay. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the kind of folklore and weirdo stuff that used to happen. But now that gay is kind of accepting, which is cool. And we just wanted to be accepted and be in rooms and being able to go and do things. You know what I'm saying? But now the new gays are going too far where you have to call me by this. I'm they, them. I'm he, they, them. You know what I'm saying? They're doing too much. And these are the new gays that didn't actually have to struggle, that didn't actually have to go through the fire that us real gays really had to go through. It's a whole bunch of people that's jumping into this gay thing because it's trendy and it's not cool. Us gays, we don't appreciate it. Yeah. We don't like it and we want them out. There you go. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. But yeah, we see, I've seen videos of like these white dudes, these white LGBT, LBGT dudes, they'll go somewhere and they be having a beard and then they put on a wig and then they'll go somewhere in public and set up a camera and then complain about being misgendered. Like if somebody says, hey, sir, would you like some more coffee? Oh, my God. You called me, sir. This is discrimination. Oh, God. That's mad corny when they do that. That's corny. Oh, God. Now I know what black people go through. Oh, God. Man, that's corny, dude. That's mad corny when they do that. And then try to compare that to discrimination we go through. Yeah, I have an issue with that type of shit. All right. I feel my sister. Um, yo, big mother, big mother, hop on, sir. You were talking earlier. What's good? What's good, y'all? What's up, man? How you doing? Hey. Yeah, I really like what you're saying on here. Yes, sir. Yeah, I appreciate you. Yes, indeed. Where you from, man? I'm from Minnesota. There you go. Shout out to Minnesota. Well, where's your family from? Uh, we always been from Minnesota. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. What else is on your mind tonight? I just, I'm thinking what they're doing out here. We try to empower these black people and uh like me being called the N-word but not really growing up as a black person, I kind of confuses me. So like I was I'm just uh, that's all I really wanted to, to like touch on with you is because you seem like you really know what you're talking about, and I really appreciate what you got going on out here. Thank you, thank you so much. I don't know what are you talking about. All right, um, let's get um, let's get Black Tastic in the building. Black Tastic in the building. 
All right, Blacktastic, what's up? How you doing, Black? I'm all right. I'm all right. Do these niggas know about the uh, the video that you slap slapping one of these suckers running up on you? You know what I'm saying? Man, man. Have they forgot? Have they forgot? You got hands. Man, 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 man. We all got training. We all this FBA is real. We'll you run up on us out of pocket. We'll put hands on you. Real talk. Real talk. Huh? We'll put hands on you. We'll put hands on. We don't do no talking, and we like to do it with a smile. We usually do it with a smile. I, I'd get off with a smile because I like to see you coming. Oh, now I know you on that. Let me give you what I'm about. Real talk all day, man. Thank you so much, man, man, man. All right, all right. Um, so we got a lot of folks in here still. Much respect to you guys. Oh, I've been on here for a few hours chopping it up. Oh, man, man, man. Y'all go get your Root Work deodorant at rootworkstyle.com. Rootworkstyle.com. Get that Root Work deodorant. The best deodorant in the game, ladies and gentlemen. Rootworkstyle.com. Get the book, Foundational Black American Race Bader, at officialfba.com. And go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com, give a contribution to the Hidden History Museum, and get the book Hidden Heroes from A to Z. All right, I'm up out of here, man. Y'all have a good one. Puppy Akute, la la to the family. Peace. From New York Times bestselling author Tariq Nasheed comes foundational Black American race baiter, the groundbreaking book shaking up the conversation on race in America. As one of the most influential voices for Black Americans today, Nasheed exposes the tactics used to manipulate, subjugate, and control black communities. In this powerful read, Tariq Nasheed equips you with the knowledge to resist injustice and reclaim your narrative. Don't miss out on the book that's redefining the game. Foundational Black American Race Baiter, available now at officialfba.com. Get your copy today.